In this video, I'm going to try to uh, explain a little bit about the reference oscillator and maybe some of the alignment points on the ANGRC-106 transceiver. The 5 MHz oscillator is really the reference from which everything else is determined. But before we even talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about 15 MHz. On these radios, all of the mechanical alignment points are set so they will line up at 15 megahertz. So 15 is a magic number. Not only can you see it in the little window on the turret module, but if you remove any of the modules, you'll see all of the calibration marks are designed to be centered right at 15.000. So it's a good habit to get into before removing any of the modules to set everything to 15.000. You can even see on the modules themselves they have a mark. The 5 MHz reference oscillator is a pretty high failure point on these radios, so you want to check it frequently. You can see on the right hand side there's a cable that comes out of the 5 MHz output. And I have it fed right now to a service monitor so I can kind of see the error in that uh, oscillator. It's about 5 Hz low. One of the things I do is uh, I use an actual GPS uh, disciplined oscillator to control the uh, time base in the service monitor. That kind of avoids a lot of the questions about how accurate your uh, test equipment is. So we'll go ahead and pop the module out of the radio. Just loosen the two screws. And the reference oscillator can then be removed from the radio. Take a closer look at the reference oscillator and you can see the frequency adjustments right on the front of the oscillator. It's a little screwdriver adjustment. You can also do this while it's in the radio. I just find it easier to take it out of the radio and do this. Here's the module to cover removed. And you can see a close up of the frequency adjustment which you can do with a really small screwdriver right on the front of the module. I built a test jig for running the oscillator outside the radio makes it a lot easier to do the adjustments. You can see not only the 5 megahertz output, which in this case is about 5 hertz low after temperature stabilization, but this also allows you to hook a scope to it and look at things like the 500 kilohertz and the 10 megahertz output. The 500 kilohertz and 10 megahertz output are both very important for the radio's function. Oddly, the 5 megahertz signal is not used in the radio. Sometimes you'll find that the oscillator, after it's set once it's reached operating temperature, may not want to start when the radio is cold. So sometimes you have to compromise and find this magic spot where the oscillator starts when it's both cold and after it's reached operating temperature. So that's everything on the reference oscillator for the ANGRC-106. This is a special bonus feature of me using a uh, 106 that I recently finished. Uh, it's a Canadian set on the uh, 7296 MMRCG uh, Saturday morning net. Yeah, K9 KVI. And the Midwest Military Radio Collectors Group net. This is K3 K8. Having a little bit of problem copying net control direct, but I am here. Uh, yes, the uh, Battleship New Jersey was on the uh, rat net this morning. They came in late. Uh, the last 15 minutes of the net they were there, but they were definitely on from, I think, uh, message room 4 or something like that on board the ship. Uh, they were running the, uh, the hardware on the ship and I think uh, one of the Model 28s on the ship. So the New Jersey was on the rat net this morning. Other than that, copying most of the stations, uh, I think Ron said he was only going to be in for uh, one round this morning, so uh, that's probably why he was not there. I uh, would also be interested on audio comments. Uh, I am on a, uh, an AN uh, GRC 106 this morning. Uh, it's another set I just finished putting together, so uh, any comments on the audio would be interesting. Uh, with that, uh, I will go ahead and uh, turn it back over to Net Control at 9 kvi and the MRCG group. This is K3KH. Over.